Welcome back. Today I was going to cover the subject of setting up our development environment to emulate our client setup. And what I mean by that is to emulate the client drives. You can quite often have clients and they'll have, you know, a database on the T drive or the Z drive or whatever the case may be. And to make things simpler, to be able to relink things before you send it to them, uh, things like that. It's just much simpler sometimes if we can replicate their setup. And that's what I wanted to discuss briefly today. So today's discussion is actually going to be centered on a recent article I published on the Matt Utter. And it's entitled, How to Emulate Client Drives. And what it is, is I want to be able to replicate my client setup. So let's say he's got his database on a drive T. Well, I want to be able to have a drive T just simplifies life. Um, and there's different ways, different approaches. Um, some present different benefits and cons. For instance, we could do a disk partition. I don't want to go down that road. I have done it in the past. Don't get me wrong. But this is much simpler, much more efficient and easier to manage in my personal opinion. And that's what we're going to cover briefly. As you can see, creating, deleting, enumerating, how, how to get help. That's what we're going to look at. Now, this is all done in DOS. And what this also means, since it is a DOS command, we can also automate this should we want to. So we can do a bat file. We could do a VB script. We could automate this through VBA if we really wanted to. That said, this is something, in my experience, that is not something I need to do very often. So it doesn't bother me just to fire up the command prompt and use that uh, well when I need to, right? So to get the command prompt, if you're not familiar, you just come here and type in command, and it will be the first thing that appears at the top. You just click it and it will open. I'm gonna throw that over on my right side, and then I'm gonna open the Windows Explorer, and I'll show you why I open the Windows Explorer in a minute. But let's start off with the command. If you're not familiar with DOS, the first thing you need to know is most often, if we type in a command, and this is the command we're going to be working with today, substitute. If you add a slash with a question mark, typically you'll get the help file. So if we press that, you'll get the help for substitute. And as it says here, it associates a path with a drive letter. So we're going to take an existing path and we're going to associate it with a drive of our choosing. Then here it's showing you two different syntaxes that can be used. The first one at the top is for creating a new drive. And the second one here with the slash D is for deleting a drive. Then the next few lines here are the input arguments. So they're going over what the input values are for the different syntaxes that we just saw. So if you look drive one specifies the virtual drive to which you want to assign a path. So what drive letter do you want to create? Um, and then the next one specifies a physical drive and path you want to assign a virtual drive. So what is the real existing path you want to uh, associate to this drive that you're creating? And then here the slash D deletes a substituted drive. So when you're done with a, a virtual drive and you want to remove it, you'd use the slash D. Then what's interesting is that last line. If you type the command with no parameter is to display a list of current virtual drives. So let's try that out. If we type in the command with no other input arguments and we just press enter, we get a list of current drives. And as you can see, it returned nothing. And that's because on this machine, I currently have none. So let's go and create one and then we'll validate if that command actually works. So to create one, like I said, we're going to be interested in this first line of syntax. So we do substitute and then the drive we want to create. So let's say we want to create a K drive. And let's say this is the path I want to associate to it. So I'm going to copy that path. You could type it out by hand. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and one thing to note here is if your path has a space in it, you need quotes. If it doesn't, well, you can get away without the quotes. But I'm going to put the quotes. Then I put my path and I close my quotations and I press enter. Now, I know it worked because it didn't return an error but there is no confirmation per se. So to confirm that it actually worked, that's where we go back to the original command and we just type in the substitute again with no input arguments. We press enter and you'll see that now it is confirming the K drive has been associated to that folder. So if 
I go onto the K drive using DOS and we just switch into the K, I can do a DIR and you'll see it matches up. I got my uh, 1.002 ACCDB and ACDE, which is in fact exactly what is in that folder. So it's working perfectly and it's working here. You'll notice here in Windows Explorer, the K drive has now appeared. And if you go into any other application, let's say Access, the K drive is now there. So you can put your folders, you can put your database there, and then you'll be able to uh, use it to link tables, or if that's where you're going to uh, use it as a repository for documents or images, whatever the case may be, you can now start using it effectively. And you can access it either way. You can use the normal path, or you can just click straight on the K drive because it is now there. It is an existing virtual drive that you can utilize. So you don't have to go through the long way anymore, documents, boo, boo, boo. No, you can just click straight on the K drive. Okay. What's the other thing we can do with this? Now that we've created it, we're able to validate it. Well, it's to delete it. And to delete it is very simple. You just follow the syntax of the second line, the slash D. So let's do that. We do substitute the drive, so the K drive, and then we do the slash D. We press enter. And now we can come here and we have to switch out of this drive because technically the K drive doesn't exist anymore. We do C. Now we can do the substitute again and you'll see there are none listed again. So that is how complex the substitute drive is to use, to create, to delete, and to enumerate virtual drives. One little note comment, I hope you also noticed that when I was running the command, I wasn't um, necessarily following the command in the sense of using the same case. So in this case, the DOS command is case insensitive. So whether you actually did it in uppercase like they demonstrate or not, the command still works. Um, and just remember the quotes around your path whenever you have spaces. Otherwise, it won't work. I hope that was uh, useful. I hope you guys can uh, use this. And like I say, it's great for replicating client setups. So when you're doing development, you know, if you need to save files to specific uh, drive and folder, you can replicate that on your development machine. It really can simplify the process of developing things. It also can simplify relinking tables. That way, when you deliver the front end to your client, an update, let's say, it's already ready to go. There's no relinking to worry about, no bloating caused by the relinking, any of that type of stuff. Thank you for spending a couple minutes of your day with me. Like, subscribe, drop me a comment. Have you seen this? Have you used this before? Do you use another technique? I'd love to uh, be made aware of other ways, other approaches of doing this. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.